1 Chronicles 20 War with Philistine Giants Then it happened in the spring, at the time when kings go out to battle, that Joab led out the army and ravaged the land of the sons of Ammon, and came and besieged Rabbah. But David stayed in Jerusalem, and Joab struck Rabbah and overthrew it. David took the crown of their king from his head, and he found it to weigh a talent of gold, and there was a precious stone in it, and it was placed on David's head, and he brought out the spoils of the city, a very great amount. He brought out the people who were in it, and put them to work at saws, iron picks, and axes. And David did the same to all the cities of the sons of Ammon. Then David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. Now it came about after this, that war broke out at Gezer with the Philistines. Then Sibachai the Hushathite killed Sippai, one of the descendants of the giants, and they were subdued. And there was war with the Philistines again. And Elhanan the son of Jair killed Lami the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Again there was war at Gath, where there was a man of great stature who had twenty-four fingers and toes, six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, and he also was descended from the giants. When he taunted Israel, Jonathan the son of Shermaiah, David's brother, killed him. These were descended from the giants in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. 1 Chronicles 21 Census Brings Plague Then Satan stood up against Israel and incited David to count Israel. So David said to Joab and to the leaders of the people, Go, count Israel from Beersheba to Dan, and bring me word so that I may know their number. But Joab said, May the Lord add to his people a hundred times as many as they are. My lord the king, are they not all my lord's servants? Why does my lord seek this thing? Why should he be a cause of guilt to Israel? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Therefore, Joab departed and went throughout Israel, and came to Jerusalem. Then Joab gave the number of the census of the people to David. Israel was one million one hundred thousand men in all who drew the sword, and Judah was four hundred and seventy thousand men who drew the sword. But he did not count Levi and Benjamin among them, because the king's command was abhorrent to Joab. Now God was displeased with this thing, so he struck Israel. David said to God, I have sinned greatly by doing this thing. But now, please overlook your servant's guilt, for I have behaved very foolishly. The Lord spoke to Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and speak to David, saying, This is what the Lord says. I extend to you three choices, choose for yourself one of them, which I will do to you. So Gad came to David and said to him, This is what the Lord says. Take for yourself three years of famine or three months to be swept away before your foes while the sword of your enemies overtakes you, or else three days of the sword of the Lord, a plague in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout the territory of Israel. Now therefore, consider what answer I shall bring back to him who sent me. David said to Gad, I am in great distress, please let me fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are very great, but do not let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague on Israel. Seventy thousand men of Israel fell. And God sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. But as he was about to destroy it, the Lord saw and was sorry about the catastrophe, and said to the destroying angel, It is enough, now relax your hand. And the angel of the Lord was standing by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Then David raised his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heaven with his drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders, covered with sackcloth, fell on their faces. And David said to God, Is it not I who commanded to count the people? Indeed, I am the one who has sinned and acted very wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Lord my God, just let your hand be against me and my father's household, and not against your people as a plague. David's Altar then the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David, that David was to go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. So David went up at the word of Gad, which he spoke in the name of the Lord. Now Ornan turned back and saw the angel, and his four sons who were with him hid themselves. And Ornan was threshing wheat. As David came to Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David, and went out from the threshing floor and prostrated himself to David with his face to the ground. Then David said to Ornan, 
Give me the sight of this threshing floor, so that I may build on it an altar to the Lord. You shall give it to me for the full price, so that the plague may be brought to a halt from the people. But Ornan said to David, Take it for yourself, and may my lord the king do what is good in his sight. See, I am giving the oxen for burnt offerings, and the threshing sledges for wood and the wheat for the grain offering. I am giving it all. Nevertheless, King David said to Ornan, No, but I will certainly buy it for the full price, for I will not take what is yours for the Lord, nor offer a burnt offering which costs me nothing. So David gave Ornan six hundred shekels of gold by weight for the site. Then David built an altar there to the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. And he called to the Lord, and he answered him with fire from heaven on the altar of burnt offering. The Lord commanded the angel, and he returned his sword to its sheath. At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite, he offered sacrifice there. For the tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses had made in the wilderness, and the altar of burnt offering were on the high place at Gibeon at that time. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, for he was terrified by the sword of the angel of the Lord. 1 Chronicles 22 David prepares for temple building. Then David said, This is the house of the Lord God, and this is the altar of burnt offering for Israel. So David gave orders to gather the strangers who were in the land of Israel, and he set stonecutters to cut out stones to build the house of God. And David prepared large quantities of iron to make the nails for the doors of the gates and for the clamps, and more bronze than could be weighed, and timbers of cedar beyond number, for the Sidonians and Tyrians brought large quantities of cedar timber to David. David said, My son Solomon is young and inexperienced, and the house that is to be built for the Lord shall be exceedingly magnificent, famous and glorious throughout the lands. Therefore I now will make preparations for it. So David made ample preparations before his death. Solomon commanded to build the temple. Then he called for his son Solomon, and commanded him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. David said to Solomon, My son, I had intended to build a house for the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, You have shed much blood and have waged great wars. You shall not build a house to my name, because you have shed so much blood on the earth before me. Behold, a son will be born to you, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies on every side. For his name will be Solomon, and I will give peace and quiet to Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now my son, the Lord be with you that you may be successful, and build the house of the Lord your God just as he has spoken concerning you. Only the Lord give you discretion and understanding, and put you in charge of Israel, so that you may keep the law of the Lord your God. Then you will prosper, if you are careful to follow the statutes and the ordinances which the Lord commanded Moses concerning Israel. Be strong and courageous, do not fear nor be dismayed. Now behold, with great pains I have prepared for the house of the Lord a hundred thousand talents of gold and a million talents of silver, and bronze and iron beyond measure, for they are in great quantity. I have also prepared timber and stone, and you may add to that. Moreover there are many workmen with you, stonecutters, masons of stone and carpenters, and all of them are skillful in every kind of work. Of the gold, silver, bronze and iron there is no limit. Arise and work, and may the Lord be with you. David also commanded all the leaders of Israel to help his son Solomon, saying, Is the Lord your God not with you? And has he not given you rest on every side? For he has handed over to me the inhabitants of the land, and the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Then arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord God, so that you may bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built for the name of the Lord. 1 Chronicles 23 Solomon reigns. Now when David reached old age, he made his son Solomon king over Israel, and he gathered together all the leaders of Israel with the priests and the Levites. Offices of the Levites Now the Levites were counted from thirty years old and upward, 
and their number by headcount of men was 38,000. Of these, 24,000 were to oversee the work of the house of the Lord, and 6,000 were officers and judges, and 4,000 were gatekeepers, and 4,000 were praising the Lord with the instruments which David made for giving praise. David divided them into divisions according to the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Gershonites Of the Gershonites there were Laden and Shimei. The sons of Laden were Jehel I, and Zetham and Joel III. The sons of Shimei were Shelemoth, Haziel, and Haran III. These were the heads of the Fathers' households of Laden. The sons of Shimei were Jahath, Zena, Jish, and Bariah. These four were the sons of Shimei. Jahath was the first and Ziza the second, but Jish and Bariah did not have many sons, so they became a father's household, one group for duty. Kohathites The sons of Kohath were four in number. Amram, Izar, Hebron, and Uzziel. The sons of Amram were Aaron and Moses, and Aaron was set apart to sanctify him as most holy, he and his sons forever, to burn incense before the Lord, to serve him and bless in his name forever. But as for Moses, the man of God, his sons were named among the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses were Gershom and Eliezer. The son of Gershom was Shabuel the chief. The son of Eliezer was Rehabiah the chief. And Eliezer had no other sons, but the sons of Rehabiah were very many. The son of Azar was Shelemith the chief. The sons of Hebron were Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechamim the fourth. The sons of Uzziel were Micah the first and Ishia the second. Merarites. The sons of Merari were Mali and Mushi. The sons of Mali were Eliezer and Kish. Eliezer died and had no sons but only daughters, so their relatives, the sons of Kish, took them as wives. The sons of Mushi were three Mali, Eder, and Jerimoth. Duties revised. These were the sons of Levi according to their fathers' households, the heads of the fathers' households of those among them who were counted, in the number of names by their head count, doing the work for the service of the house of the Lord, from twenty years old and upward. For David said, The Lord God of Israel has given rest to his people, and he dwells in Jerusalem forever. Also, the Levites will no longer need to carry the tabernacle and all its utensils for its service. For by the last words of David, the sons of Levi were counted from twenty years old and upward. For their office is to assist the sons of Aaron with the service of the house of the Lord, in the courtyards and in the chambers, and in the purification of all holy things, and the work of the service of the house of God, and with the showbread, and the fine flour for a grain offering and unleavened wafers, or what is baked in the pan or what is well. Mixed and all measures of volume and size, they are to stand every morning to thank and to praise the Lord and likewise at evening, and to offer all burnt offerings to the Lord on the Sabbaths, the new moons and the appointed festivals, in the number determined by the ordinance concerning them, continually before the Lord. So they are to perform the duties of the tent of meeting, the holy place, and of assisting the sons of Aaron their relatives, for the service of the house of the Lord.